then went off from the Ursulines, they sought a house for me at a distance from the lake. There was but one to be found empty, which had the look of the greatest poverty. I had no chimney but in the kitchen, through which one was obliged to pass. I took my daughter with me, and gave up the largest room for her and the maid who was to take care of her. I was lodged in a little hole on straw to which I went up by ladder, as we had no other furniture but our beds, quite plain and homely. I sought some straw chairs, some Dutch earthen and wooden ware. Never did I enjoy a greater content than in this little hole, which appeared so very conformable to the state of Jesus Christ. I fancied everything better on wood than on plate. I laid in all my provisions, hoping to stay there a long time, but the devil did not leave me long in such sweet peace. It would be difficult for me to tell the persecutions which were stirred up against me. They threw stones in at my windows, which fell at my feet. I had put my little garden in order. They came in the night, tore it all up, broke down the arbor, and overturned everything in it, as if it had been ravaged by soldiers. They came to abuse me at the door all night long, making such a racket as if they were going to break it open. These persons have since told who the person was that put them on such work. Though from time to time I continue my charities at Gex, I was not the less persecuted for it. They offered one person a warrant to compel Father Lacombe to stay at Tunon, thinking he would otherwise be a support to me in the persecution, but we prevented it. I knew not then the designs of God, and that he would soon draw me from that poor solitary place in which I enjoyed a sweet and solid satisfaction, notwithstanding the abuse. I thought myself happier here than any suffering on earth. It was for me like a nest and a place of repose, and Christ was willing that I should be like him. The devil, as I have said, irritated my persecutors. They sent to desire me to go out of the diocese. All the good which the Lord had caused me to do in it was condemned more than the greatest crimes. Crimes they tolerated, but me they could not endure. All this while I never had any uneasiness or repentance for my having left all, not that I was assured of having done the will of God therein. Such an assurance would have been too much for me, but I could neither see nor regard anything, receiving everything alike from the hand of God, who directed and disposed of these crosses for me, either in justice or in mercy. The Marchioness of Prunai, sister of the Chief Secretary of State to His Royal Highness, the Duke of Savoy, and his Prime Minister, had sent an express from Turin, in the time of my illness, to invite me to come to recite with her, and to let me know that being so persecuted as I was in this diocese, I should find an asylum with her, that during that time things might grow better, that when they should be well disposed, she would return with me and join me 
with a friend of mine from Paris, who was willing also to come to labor there, according to the will of God. I was not at that time in a condition to execute what she desired, and expected to continue with the excellence till things should change. She then wrote to me about it no more. This lady is one of extraordinary piety, who had quitted the splendor and noise of the court for the more silent satisfaction of a retired life, and to give herself up to God, with an eminent share of natural advantages. She has continued a widow twenty-two years, has refused every offer of marriage to consecrate herself to our Lord entirely and without any reserve. When she knew that I had been obliged to leave the Ursulines, yet without knowing anything of the manner in which i had been treated she procured a letter to oblige father lacombe to go to pass some weeks at turin for her own benefit and to bring me with him thither where i should find a refuge all this she did unknown to us as she has told us since superior force moved her to do it without knowing the cause if she had been deliberately reflected on it being such a prudent lady she probably would not have done it because the persecutions which the bishop of geneva procured us in that place cost her more than a little of humiliations our lord permitted him to pursue me after a surprising manner into all the places i have been in without giving me any relaxation i never did him any harm but on the contrary would have let down my life for the good of his diocese all this fell out without any design on our part we without hesitation believed it was the will of god and thought it might be the means of his appointment to draw us out of the reproach and persecution we labor under seeing myself chased on the one side desire on the other it was concluded that father lacombe should conduct me to turin and that he should go from thence to Versil. Beside him I took with me a religious man of merit, who had taught theology for fourteen years past, to take away from our enemies all cause for slander. I also took with me a boy whom I had brought out of France. They took horses, and I hired a carriage for my daughter, my chambermaid, and myself but all persecutions are useless when it pleases god to permit them to be frustrated our adversaries immediately rode to paris a hundred ridiculous stories were circulated about this journey committees were acted on it things invented at pleasure and as false as anything in the world could be. It was my brother, Father Lamont, who was so active in uttering all this stuff. Had he believed it to be true, he ought out of charity to have concealed it, much more being so very false. They said that I was gone all alone with Father Lacombe, strolling about the country from province to province with many such fables as weak and wicked as they were incoherent and badly put together we suffered all with patience without vindicating ourselves or making any complaint scarcely were we arrived at turin but the bishop of geneva 
wrought against us. As he could pursue us no other way, he did it by letters. Father Lacombe repaired to Brazil, and I stayed at Turin with the Marchioness of Brunei. But what crosses was I assaulted with in my own family from the Bishop of Geneva, from the Barnabites, and from a vast number of persons besides. My eldest son came to find me on the death of my mother-in-law, which was an augmentation of my troubles. After we had heard all his accounts of things, and how they had made sales of all the movables, chosen guardians, and settled every article without consulting me, I seemed to be there entirely useless. It was judged not proper for me to return, considering the rigor of the season. The Marchioness of Prunai, who had been so warmly desirous of my company, seeing my great crosses and reproaches, looked coldly upon me. My childlike simplicity, which was the state wherein God at that time kept me, passed with her for stupidity. For when the question was to help anyone or about anything which God required of me, he gave me, with the weakness of a child, the evident tokens of divine strength. Her heart was quite shut up to me all the time I was there. Our Lord, however, made me foretell events which should happen, which since that time have actually been fulfilled, as well to herself as to her daughter, and to the virtuous ecclesiastic who lived at her house. She did not fail, at least, to conceive more friendship for me, seeing then that Christ was in me. It was the force of self-love and fear of reproach which had closed up her heart. Moreover, she thought her state more advanced than in reality it was, by reason of her being without tests. But she soon saw, by experience, that I had told her the truth. She was obliged, for family reasons, to leave Turin, and go to live on her own estate. She solicited me to go with her, but the education of my daughter did not permit. To stay at Turin without her seemed improper, because, having lived very retired in this place, I made no acquaintance in it. I knew not which way to turn. The bishop of Vassil, where Father Lacombe was, most obligingly wrote to me, earnestly entreating me to come, promising me his protection and assuring me of his esteem, adding that he should look upon me as his own sister, that he wished extremely to have me there. It was his own sister, one of my particular friends, who had written to him about me, as had also a French gentleman, an acquaintance of his. But a point of honor kept me from it. I will not have it said that I had gone after Father Lacombe and that I had come to Turin only for the purpose of going to Brazil. He had also his reputation to preserve, which was the cause that he could not agree to my going thither, however importunate the bishop was for it. Had we believed it to be the will of God, we would both of us have passed over this consideration. God kept us both in so great a dependence on his orders that he did not let us foreknow them, but the divine moment of his providence did
determined everything. This proved of very great service to Father Lacombe, who had long walked in assurances to die to them and to himself. God, by an effect of his goodness, that he might thus die, without any reserve, took them all from him. During the whole time of my residence at Turin, our Lord conferred on me very great favors. I found myself every day more transformed into him and had continually more knowledge of the state of souls without ever being mistaken or deceived therein, though some were willing to persuade me to think the contrary. I had used my utmost endeavors to give myself other thoughts, which has caused me not a little pain. When I told or wrote to Father Lacombe about the state of some souls, which appeared to him more perfect and advanced than the knowledge given to me of them, he attributed to pride. He was angry with me and prejudiced against my state. I had no uneasiness on account of his esteeming me the less, for I was not in a condition to reflect whether he esteemed me or not. He could not reconcile my willing obedience in most things with so extraordinary a firmness, which in certain cases he looked upon as criminal. He admitted a distrust of my grace. He was not yet sufficiently confirmed in this way, nor did he duly comprehend that it did not in any wise depend it on me to be one way or another. If I had any such power, I should have suited myself to what he said to spare myself the crosses which my firmness caused me, or at least I would have artfully dissembled my real sentiments. I could do neither. Were all to perish by it, I was in such a manner constrained that I could not forbear telling him the things, just as our Lord directed me to tell them to him. In this he had given me an infallible fidelity to the very last. No crosses or pain have ever made me fail a moment therein. These things then, which appear to him to be the strong prejudice of a conceited opinion, set him at variance against me, though he did not openly show it. On the contrary, he tried to conceal it from me. Yet, however far he was from me, I could not be ignorant of it. My spirit felt it, and that more or less, as the opposition was stronger or weaker. As soon as it abated or ended, my pain occasionally thereby ceased. He also on his side experienced the same. He has told me and written to me many times over. When I stand well with God, I find I am well with you. When I am otherwise with him, I then find myself to be so with you also. Thus he so clearly that when God received him, it was always in uniting him to me, as if he would accept of nothing from him but in this union. While he was at Turin, a widow who was a good servant of God, all in the brightness of sensibility, came to him to confess. She uttered wonderful things of her state. I was then at the other side of the confessional. He told me that he had met with a soul given up to God, that it was she who was present, that he was very much edified by her. 
that he was far from finding the like in me that i operated nothing but death upon his soul at first i rejoice at his having met with such a holy soul it ever gives me the highest joy to see my god glorified as i was returning the lord showed me clearly the state of that soul as only a beginning of devotion mixed with affection and a little silence filled with a new sensation this and more as it was said before me i was obliged to write to him on his first reading of my letter he discovered the stamp of the truth in it but soon after letting in again his old reflections he view all i wrote in the light of pride he still had in his mind the ordinary rules of humility conceived and combined after our manner as to me i let myself to be led as a child who says and does without distinction whatever it is made to say and do i left myself to be led wheresoever my heavenly father pleased high or low all was alike good to me he wrote me that at his first reading of my letter there appeared in it something of truth but that on reading it over again he found it to be full of pride and of preference of my own discernments to that of others some time after he was more enlightened in regard to the state i was in he then said continue to believe as you have done i encourage and exhort you to do it some time after he sufficiently discovered by that person's manner of acting that she was very far from what she had thought i give this as only one instance i might give many others but this may suffice end of chapter thirteen